All right, so hopefully this will be the uh, one of the last videos I'll pull for you guys on the uh, the side of uh, coding the single I and triple I for the autonomous snowplow competition. Um, one of the things I want to mention on the let, let's start with the single I here first. Um, I think we all you know figure out how this works. You know we, we're going to come up to a strip, uh, but that reverse marker is going to be way at the end. Um, I've got uh, a section of uh, track here that I can use for both the single eye and triple eye. I think you get the gist of what I'm up to here. Um, but in the real world, we'll go all the way down to the end, turn, then come back. One of the things I want to mention to you, though, is um, when we get to that turn, wherever that turn is, right, you guys got to dial in this turn, the length of the turn, the steering of the turn, that straight factor of the turn, and then this reacquire routine that's going to get me back onto the strip. And I think you guys have a general idea of how to do that. One of the things I want to mention to you, though, is it'd be better if during this reacquire, if you overshoot a little bit in this direction, so you're almost facing up a little bit, um, meaning if you undershoot and you travel in this direction, you're, you're going to get outside the boundaries of the course. If you overshoot and you travel in this direction, you're heading back towards the garage anyway. So there might not be a need to e-stop. You might say, you know what, we're good. Let's just let the thing go. Um, we're going to get back to the garage. We're going to push a bunch more snow, and we're going to be good. Um, so so that's my just my kind of idea on the on the single eye that I think you should take, keep in mind is that during that reacquire, better if you're going to err at all, to err a little bit on the overshoot rather than the undershoot. Obviously, we want to acquire the strip and go all the way back, but on the overshoot, we can follow a path back even if we miss the mark altogether. Now, let me show you the uh, the code that I've got in here. One thing I think that you guys should be doing a little differently is um, the timer one, get timer count, timer two, get timer count. We don't have to call that down here. Um, we can just we can just update that during the inputs. So the inputs get called every time, right? We Go sub inputs, we go sub follow track, we go sub output outputs, and then we go sub print variables. Um, we can just set these right here. It's going to call it every time, and regardless if it's um, which part of the follow track you're in, that data you're always going to have. So don't. Uh, I think cleaning that up and getting that out of there and putting the the timer one get timer count and timer two get timer count up here makes a lot more sense for the single eye. Um, beyond that, just try to. Maybe I'll post this code. You guys can use it if you want. Um, you know, but kind of commenting out, here's my teleop RC control. Here's starting my large turn um, for a left marker. Here's starting my large turn for the right marker. By the way, it's the same chunk of code, essentially. Uh, probably could do that with an OR gate, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, but there may be times, too, that you might say, well, for the right turn, you know, Later on, when we're doing the triple I, we may want it to be different. Uh, for the right turn for the single I, we may not even use the right turn. Um, or we might might not even use the marker right to, to do another turn because we just need the marker left to do our U-turn and come back to the garage. The continue large turn. So this is when I, um, if I don't have a, a marker left or I don't have a strip, as long as the timer one's greater than zero, I just continue turning that. Um, else if uh, the timer is down to zero, I start that straight, which means that the tape detect is false. I'm just going to drive straight to go down and reacquire. And then when I reacquire, if the tape detect is true and my left position is way on the left and timer two equals zero, I set the timer count. And as long as uh, timer two is greater than zero, I'm steering back towards the strip. And that's the part where a little bit of overshoot is better than undershoot because you're not going to leave the course. So you're going to come back towards the garage anyways. And otherwise, if I'm if I'm not doing any of those things associated with the timers, the markers, then I'm just following the tape. Um, and I just got my steering according to my proportional gain. And, and that kind of solves the, the, whole, uh, the whole piece there in a nutshell. So that is the single eye. Now let me go into the triple eye here for a second. And again, I'll post both these codes in the, into the team page here. Um, the only difference of the triple I now is I, I've set up the marker count and the accumulated count. Um, I'm still putting all my timers up here. So I have timers one, two, and three. I'm putting them in update input. So when I'm getting value, I'm putting that in update input. I'm not calling the timer count all over the place down here. 
Now when I come down here in Teleop, it's RC mode, see my comments, radar sensor, if radar sensor is true, then just throttle zero, steering zero. Also if uh, marker left is true, and the marker count equals the accumulated count, uh, and timer one equals zero and timer two equals zero, then I set a timer for seven seconds or whatever the time is to start my large turn. Um, and then I increment my marker count in there as well. And, and the reason why is so when I'm first coming in, my marker count and my accumulated counts are both set to zero. So that first turn is going to happen right here, right? And then after that turn, I'm going to increment the marker count. Then uh, a no turn increment marker count, else if marker left equals true and marker count is less than accumulated count and timer two equals zero, then I will just increment the marker count. So this is the idea where I'm following the strip. Um, I'm following the strip up here and I'm not gonna turn here. I'm just gonna increment and then I'm looking for the next one. Maybe I'm looking for a one or a two or a three marker. So that's kind of what that's doing there. And so then I, I increment the marker count. Uh, then I start my large turn, else if marker, and this is for the marker right now. So this was marker left. So anytime my marker left's true and my marker count equals my accumulate count, my timers are zero, um, I'm going, my large turn going down. This is my large turn going back up. So if uh, marker right equals true and timer one equals zero, then set the timer count, uh, set timer one to 7,000, start th steering and throttle, and we're going to do our accumulated count. We're going to increment that. If timer one is greater than zero, I'm steering 150, negative 25. And that doesn't matter which timer one, whether I'm a big turn going down or the big turn going up. I'm just basically reusing that timer one greater than zero to, to do my big long sweeping turn. Uh, else if I don't detect tape at all, then I'm just gonna drive straight. That's my steering zero. Uh, reacquire correction timer. So this is just like in the, in the single eye. If the tape detect is true and the left position is really, really small, less than negative 50, and timer three equals zero, can I set a timer count um, three to 2,500 or whatever the number you're gonna use. Um, this is also when I reacquire the tape, it's also when I set the marker count to zero. It's a good time to set it zero because I need to start counting when I get up to the top again. And the reacquire correction is actually, as long as timer three is greater than zero, Throttle's 100, steering's negative 25, so that's steering me back towards the strip, either on the top or the bottom, just to make a difference. And then the follow strip is the tape position. So what you'll see is when you run this now, let me turn on my turn off my RC mode and hit this. So you'll notice right now my down here the marker count and the accumulate counts are the same thing down here. Zero zero. So this should start a timer and start my big sweeping turn. You see my timer once at 6,900 down here or 7,000 or whatever it is. Starting my big sweeping turn, huge sweeping turn. I'm actually ignoring that single eye track, so I, I could use this both for the, both of them here. Now you'll see that my steering is going to go down to zero right now. So this is kind of that reacquire mode. I want to drive at about a 45 degree angle towards that bottom strip. And then when I get there, I'm going to do my correction. Now this one, it's critical that we that we acquire this strip because otherwise we're gonna make one turn and we're gonna we're gonna lose it. So unlike the single eye where I could just maybe overshoot and get back to the garage and that'd be okay. It's imperative that we acquire the strip. Acquired. You'll see now that my uh, marker count and my accumulate count are both zero because my uh, marker count went to zero when I reacquired that strip. And now when I get down to the end my accumulate count's gonna go to one. See that down there. Marker count is at zero. So now coming up on this side of the strip, marker count is zero and accumulate count is one. So I'm gonna have to get this one to accumulate to one so I can, so I can turn on that one now. So now what you'll see is I'm going to go straight, one and one. Now I actually went to a two on marker count, but, but again, one and one's what caused the turn. Marker count went back to zero. Accumulate count's gonna go up to two now. I'm gonna go back up. Marker count is zero. I'm going to go past the zero marker, past the one marker, and I'll turn on the two marker, which is actually the third marker. Zero marker, one marker, two marker. And then I keep going. And so on and so forth. And in this particular case, we'd have both vehicles going simultaneously, obviously. 
and and that's going to be a big deal. But, but you know, this this is the trick here. This I would say my angle might even be a little too steep. You want maybe closer to a forty five, and then we need that re reacquire routine where we're going to go into that mode. Where we're going to turn kind of easy back towards the strip to the point where I can reacquire. So hopefully this helps you guys. Um, I will post my single eye code and my triple eye code, which I've cleaned up. Really, it's just you guys' code. I just kind of took a sample of what you guys are doing on Saturday and just tried to clean it up a little bit, try to comment it out. Um, and what you guys really need to do is take one of the vehicles outside, single eye, dial in the numbers, take the other vehicle outside, triple eye, dial in the numbers, and then uh, we could have this thing working. Anyways, um, check the team's page. Uh, both the codes will be posted and a link to this video as well.